This is rocking with J-Man. It's Whiskey is Machi. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay. How are you? Good. How are you? You know, just chilling. Congratulations on your sing uh, single. Look what I have become. Thank you very much. That was a that's a cool one. I, I think so. At least it's a little faster and more up tempo than a lot of our other stuff. So the tracks brutal. It gets me pumped up. You know, it's just like the tracks like a brutal song. You know, it's like mm -hmm. really brutal. You can feel it if you really love music. I agree with you. Um, like I said, it's it's more up tempo than a lot of our other, uh, you know, stuff that maybe we're known for. But uh, we figure that's a good one to get on the radio. You know, um, like you said, gets you pumped up. If you're driving your car, <laughs> you know, go a little faster and hope you don't get pulled over. Uh, how did you hook up with Speed from Soil Work? Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, we were, you know, obviously recording the record um the vocals needed to get done so it got to the point where uh you know we we've known the uh, the, the soil work guys since uh about you know since Ozfest 2005 so we reached out to him and said hey you know we have this album that's pretty much done um you know would you be interested in possibly doing doing the vocals for it so he said send me a few tracks so we sent him a few tracks and uh didn't take long from you you know literally you know i don't want to say within minutes but within minutes he uh, responded and said, Let, let's get this thing going. So the video was, was pretty sick. What is it like filming during the pandemic? Say that again. My, my kid's downstairs uh, yelling. Sorry about that. <laughs> all right. It's all right. Uh, the video was pretty sick. What is it like filming during the pandemic? Uh, everybody's separate. Um, you know, Bjorn obviously sent his, his footage from, from Sweden. Um, you know, everybody in the band filmed their stuff separately and sent it to our drummer who, who put everything together, Jimmy. Um, I think, I think we did a, he did a phenomenal job with it too. So, but yeah, pretty much. I mean, obviously if this wasn't happening in the world, everybody, you know, probably besides Bjorn would have been together working on it, but we think it ended up pretty cool, you know, considering what we had, how we had to do it. Feel to knock out all the rust off and starting to making new music again. How did it feel? Oh man, um, felt really good because uh, you know after all that happened and with the layoff and 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 everything, you know there was a point where we felt like maybe this album isn't going to get completed, and uh, you know a lot of doubts, you know in ourselves, and uh, you know once like I said once Bjorn kind of got on board. Um, you know, it kind of got exciting again and, and being able to, you know, play these songs, record these songs leading up to that as well. Um, but yeah, for a while it was like, I, we don't know what was going to happen. You know, is it, is it even going to come out? So sometimes the, you know, the inspiration and, and, the, and, the, and the urge to play your instrument sometimes can come into question when you don't know what's going to happen with, uh, with something you've put, you know, your heart and soul into as far as writing an album. So um you know, right now, everybody's really just fired up back into playing a little bit more. And uh, hopefully we can hopefully we can take this thing on the road a little bit, you know, when everything comes back to normal. Why, why did it take 16 years to make new music? <laughs> Do you have 16 years to uh, <laughs> to hear it now? Uh, you know, I'll try to make I'll try to give you the uh, the cliff note version where, uh, you know, when we were on tour with the imbuing. Uh, towards the end of 2006, our drummer Jimmy developed uh, a wrist condition. Um, it's called decor vein syndrome. And basically what would happen is whenever he'd play the drums, his wrist and hand would go numb. It would feel like electricity was shooting through it. So he kind of had to get that fixed. You know, we got a couple fill-in drummers for a couple tours to kind of help us out. But, you know, once it came time to really get, you know, get going for the new album, we couldn't find another drummer to kind of fill in and, and take over so we kind of just said well let's go on hiatus until jimmy's ready to come back and he did come back um so we started recording the album in about 2010 and like i said before you know the whole thing leading up to bjorn uh hope i'm trying to i'm trying to tie this in together uh so hopefully that kind of made sense but that's part of the reason why it took so long jimmy we had to wait for him to get better um 
and then obviously, you know, recording the album and waiting for, uh, you know, to get the vocals done with Bjorn. So there's that in a nutshell. What did you do in your off time? What did you do in your off time? Had a couple kids, got married. <laughs> Not in that order. No, I got married, had a couple kids. Um, you know, just that type of thing. Um, you know, just living everyday, <laughs> everyday life, I guess. You know, it's amazing how things, how much can change, uh, you know, in 15 years or 16 years, whatever, you know, you'll find out. <laughs> yeah, I'll find out. Yeah, totally. I'll, t I'll totally, when I find the perfect girl for me. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yep. That sounds like one of the most greatest facts, uh, you know, uh, downtime, you know, this meeting the love of your, uh, love of your wife, making kids. That's yep. fantastic. And I'm lucky enough, you know, my wife is my drummer's sister. So, you know, keeping it within the, you know, that thing. So, yeah, it's cool. It's very cool. Very cool. So your new album, Omega Kill, is the same album you were working in 2012. Yes. And the I, I knew this was going to happen with a lot of, uh, you know, when we came up with the name of the record, it's actually omega collide it's the first half of the word kaleidoscope um so yes yeah, it's, it's the same music like i said this this music was a lot of it was written back in 06 and 07 around that time frame and then obviously everything kind of uh you know got set on the back burner with, with jimmy but yeah it's it's a lot of the same material you know obviously some things were refined between then and now um you know so we had a lot of time to really analyze the music and, and make sure that this is what we wanted to to put out how hard was it getting back into the groove you were in before you stopped making music before you stopped making music. um oh that's a good question um it was more of like a, a mental um you know kind of how you set yourself up mentally like you know once once you're ready to go you're ready to go i mean you just got to make sure you're in um you know top shape on your instrument that you can play these songs again um you know because when i'm not working on gizmachi stuff i'm playing other things and it's different you know uh so getting you know certain things mentally uh in shape i guess um to play this type of music you know it's a lot of odd time signatures polyrhythm stuff so yeah i mean it's just i guess as long as you're you know, it's just doing it basically to get back into it. So uh, it has to be hard releasing music during the pandemic. How are you adapting to putting out music now? Um, we kind of felt like we were um like on an even playing field with with a lot of the other bands because you know every other band, you know, they put out an album and they tour. Well, we haven't been able to do that. And right now with everything kind of shut down as far as concerts for the, you know, the past year, we kind of feel like uh, it puts us on a level playing field with all those other bands that would be out touring right now. So with us, it, it's, it's, I don't want to say, you know, try to bring it into a positive light, but with us, it kind of, uh, you know, like, Hey, everybody's doing the same thing. They're just putting music out right now. Nobody's touring. So, you know, I kind of looked at it as uh, if you had to bring a positive out of that, that would be it. And I apologize for my voice. I'm a little under the weather. Uh, you know, two kids, one of them was sick a few days ago. Now the other one's sick. So now I think I'm catching it. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. So I'm trying to hold on to my voice now. No, you're not the interviewer, are you? No, you're not the one that's asking the questions. If my voice dies and I get sick, oh, well, well can we just say this? Can we just get a memorial for my career there? Can we just... <laughs> We well, I'll try not to get you sick through this, you know, <laughs> I'll try not to sneeze on you. So. I really hope I don't. Oh, God, starting now. <laughs> That's question. <laughs> <laughs> I know some states are opening up with full captivity and no mask. Uh, any plans to tour those states in the summer? Um, I don't I don't really know because um. You know, Bjorn obviously is in Sweden. We're in America. We'd like to be able to play these songs with him. So 
we're kind of looking forward to, um, you know, 2022 as far as, you know, we obviously a lot of things have to line up, you know, the whole thing, the planets have to line up all this stuff. Um, so we really don't know what the plan is as far as us touring. We want to. Um, we don't know the extent of how we're going to be able to do it um, or the details. But uh, obviously, when the decision is made and any details come out or get finalized, we will uh, we will let everybody know. But hopefully it happens. What is things like there? Are things opening it up or it just closing? Or is it opening up slowly or opening up actually very fast? It depends on the state. I mean, you kind of mentioned it before. Some states are opening, um, opening up. Um, I actually live in South Carolina, which which has been opened up, you know, most of the whole time. Um, so, I mean, it depends on the state, you know? Yeah, yeah, it depends on the state. Yeah, like Florida, everything's opening up yep. very quickly. There, Florida is like kind of taking like coronavirus is basically dead now. They're, yeah, so it depends on the state, correct? Yeah. yeah. When is the next single going to come out? Well, uh, today is, uh, in a few days, we're going to launch a new um, lyric video. I don't know when this is going to air. So should I, <laughs> should I be speaking in the past tense? <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a lyric video coming out for the title track, Omega Collide, uh, which is my favorite track personally from the record. Um, and then we're going to be working on other things as well. Maybe another music video playthrough video something like that i know um there's a guitar world thing uh a video thing that we did for them or with them i should say we don't know when that's coming out but there is there is there are things coming up we'll be doing a lot of stuff coming up soon um so just uh keep an eye out what is your favorite memory from playing the show favorite memory from playing a show oh my goodness um there's one thing in particular that I, I do remember, um, and I, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, but we were on tour with Mushroom Head, uh, our friends from, from Ohio. And um, I remember a, a, at the Croc Rock in, in Pennsylvania was the, was the venue. And it was late in the imbuing tour. And, you know, we kind of started to, to notice, you know, we'd get pockets of people in, in the crowd that knew, started to know the words, you know, and obviously we're not Bon Jovi where we're going to have 20,000 people in, in the stands singing every word, holding on to every note. But it got to the point where there was like pockets of people in the crowd standing right in front of like where Mike was singing and where I'd be, you know, right in front of us. And I remember the chorus too. I want to say it was the song Wandering Eyes. I stepped up to the microphone to sing because Mike sings the, you know, actual chorus. I do the backing vocals slash uh, harmonies and stuff like that live. And I remember stepping to the, to the microphone and looking down and there was just this group of, of dudes just looking up, singing, singing the chorus. And I couldn't even hear myself coming through the monitor. They were that loud. And I was, it was one of those moments where you're like, our music is, is getting to people and it's affecting them. And that, that's a, that was a special, uh, special moment for me personally. That, that's <laughs> thank you <laughs> and, uh, that has to feel fantastic Why yeah now you can imagine how you know like i said bon jovi feels when there's twenty thousand people you know this was probably about you know seven <laughs> eight nine ten people but it was still for me it was it was one of those moments where uh i still look back and kind of get goosebumps when something like that happens what is your words ever getting beat up what well, say that again ever got beat up man i'm sure. yeah of course. Yep. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you ever first fighted somebody and won the, to tell the tale? Of course. Yeah. You win some, you lose some. Kid, you tell me the winning story? For the winning story? Oh, I, I mean, this is when I was a kid. I don't want to talk about, you know, I try not to fight. I try not to fight anymore. <laughs> I mean, on stage, like, what's your worst memory from a stage? Oh, I, th I thought you meant, did I ever get into a fight? And no. beat anybody up? No, I was just meaning. <laughs> oh, I just worst me up. worst memory of, of playing. Um, I should have expected that if you asked for the best memory. Um, I mean, there's a few. I know there was uh, one show 
where on Ozfest, um, it was like the second show or something on Ozfest in 2005. And um, Mike, the other guitar player, his amp blew or something happened to it. And the whole show, he was out of commission. So it was only me playing guitar for that show. Um, now, it's a very, um, I felt a lot of pressure once I realized <clears throat> Mike's stuff wasn't working. I'm looking over. I see him trying to, you know, fiddle with his amp. It's not working. So now I realize, okay, I have to be super tight now and make sure I lock in on everything because, you know, once you have two guitar players playing, you know, everything sounds heavier, you know, uh, you can get away with not maybe playing as tight or something, you know, you can kind of get into it a little more. Well, I had to make sure that I was like locked in with Jimmy. Um, and it was just a weird feeling knowing that my guitar was the only one being heard, especially during solos. You know, during a solo, you know, when you have the other guitar taking up the rhythm and you're just playing the lead, it, it kind of helps fill everything up. But when you're playing a solo and there's no other guitar, you're like, you're completely naked, uh, for lack of a better term, um, out there. And that was, that was a weird one for me. But it was, it was a cool experience in that sense that whatever, but I didn't like it. I'd rather have Mike and me playing together. Uh, what is next for you? What's next for you? Hopefully feeling a little better. Um, no, I just, I really hope that, you know, the album came out um, this past weekend, or la la I guess last week now, uh, came out Friday the 12th. And I guess we're just going to try to get as much attention on it as we can. Um, you know, I, it seems to be doing well so far on the streaming stuff and, and, the, and the digital sales, but we just got to keep everybody's eyes and ears on it. Um, you know, we, I know there's a lot of people out there that either forgot about us because it's been so long and then the younger audience who never heard of us. Um, so that, that's kind of has to be our, our focus is to number one, remind everybody we're back, let them know we're back and then let the younger audience uh, know that uh, there's this band that has been around for a while but they're back and uh, <laughs> taking no prisoners. <laughs> yeah. Um, about the younger audience. Mm -hmm. I think the younger audience, you have to be very lucky if you want to get somebody like a teenager age, because you want to know why? Hip why? Huh? Yeah, I know. Yep. Everything's ruled by hip hop now. I know. Oh, it's going to be really hard to get because rock stars, they rock kind of didn't. I'm not saying rock died, but like rock accidentally forgot to do something in like one of their things and they got to sit in the back. But yeah, yeah. Things. I mean, I understand that there's a change and you'll 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 find this out later. But, um, you know, I'd say every decade or so things kind of change. And I know like pop culture in America it's not very rock and roll, especially metal friendly. Um, it's not in the forefront of anything really anymore. I mean, obviously there are the bands that, that are, you know, huge, but we're riding that like sea level type of, type of band. I, I never give us, I never give us enough credit. I know that, but you're right. It, it's going to be tough to, to get that younger audience, but uh, you know, hopefully I think, you know, I think the last few years, a lot, you know, some younger kids are getting back into rock music, playing instruments again, guitar, drums, all that stuff. So hopefully there's a huge resurgence of, you know, of real musicians. You know, I don't take anything away from, you know, the, the pop hip hop stuff that, that is dominating the airwaves. But I mean, let's, let's get some real musicians back into the forefront of, uh, of music what real music is what do you think about uh the controversy with uh sharon o2 born and her show the talk oh the sharon osborne thing um osborne. you know i try not to get into any of that stuff um you know i feel like once a band kind of uh comments on some political stuff or something like that you know, you have people, you have like two sides, you know, and right now everyone's kind of split down the middle. And I feel like instantly you, you, you 
throw yourself into controversy, which we don't, we don't want to be known for something like that. We want to be known for the music. And I know sometimes it, it gets headlines out there. Um, when you say something controversial or comment on a controversial topic. So we kind of just let, let that go. You know, we don't want to be, uh, you know, known for saying or doing something like that, um, which might be stupid on our part, you know, obviously would get more eyes and ears on us, but you know, we don't want our fans kind of splitting and arguing with each other because of what one of us in the band said that they don't agree with or do agree with. Plus, everybody in the band has their own opinion about stuff, too. So, you know, me saying something might uh, somebody in the band might disagree with me. And the next thing you know, we're fighting. So I, we try to stay out of all that stuff. I appreciate the question, but I'm going to plead the fifth. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Besides, somebody can have one of their opinion. It's always been like that since the beginning of time, actually, even mm -hmm. since cavemen. Somebody yeah, it should be like that. It should be like that. You have your opinion and agree to disagree. Yeah, it's always been like that. Even since caveman time, when they would just like make rah, even since that, it's like I'm. I'm not trying to. I'm just saying that. It, you know, they're cavemen. <laughs> but yeah. I bet they were like this. Yeah. <laughs> But they didn't have the internet to to really uh, you know magnify everything and and make everybody hate each other, and that's that's what's going on now, you know. And it's weird to me, you know the 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 music news websites that we all go to and that we all love, you know. This is me personally, but I'd rather go to these sites and read music news, not uh, somebody comments on something political or controversial that has nothing to do with music. Like I don't. I don't care about that. I don't care when somebody has their own opinion about something, you know, that's fine. hundred percent behind you for having an opinion, but like, I don't, I don't care about that. I, I like you and listen to your music because of your music, not because of a political view or because you have, you know, like that's, that's how I feel about that. How do my followers follow you? How do my followers follow you? Well, I, I appreciate that. I guess we'll have to follow you as well, huh? Yeah, I'm saying, uh, where do they go to get to your website? That's what I'm saying. All right, so <clears throat> right now we uh, we have we're on Instagram at Gizmachi Band, G I Z M A C H I Band. Uh, Facebook is the same, Gizmachi Band. Um, the as soon as we have the CDs, which should be here within a week or so, uh, and merch is coming as well. They will both be on our Bandcamp page, which is just Gizmachi, Bandcamp Gizmachi. Um, and then I was told we have to make a TikTok page because that's where that's where the young audience, the younger audience is on TikTok. So I guess I should get to that. Um, so that'll be next. I guess uh, try to find Gizmachi on TikTok soon. It feels weird for me to say that. Yeah, I don't even have TikTok. I feel like an old man now. I bet people are going to call me a boomer. <laughs> Even though I'm not, they're probably going to, you don't have TikTok, you be boomer, 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 boomer. Oh, uh, you sound like my, my four-year-old daughter is doing that, the boomer thing, because of, uh, what is she like on there? Jillian and Addie on, on YouTube. I don't know if you have any idea who those little girls are. No, I have no clue. Yeah, well, my four-year-old daughter, I guess they do a skit on one of their uh, their videos and they they call each other Boomer, OK Boomer or something. So, my yeah, my four-year-old has no idea what any of that stuff is, but she's yelling, OK Boomer. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's adorable, though. It sounds oh, it is. Adorable. It is. It definitely is. <laughs> yep. OK Boomer, you got it? <laughs> yep, <laughs> exactly it. Hey, you got some cool, cool pictures on, the, on, your, uh, on your walls there. Oh, uh, yeah, my dad took them. Those are awesome. Thank you. Yep. Uh, he's actually an interviewer as well, like a thing like me. Well, he's a photographer. I actually am a professional photographer, if you could call me that. I actually am as a professional interviewer and a professional uh, because I took one of these pictures, which my dad's like flip phone. No, not flip phone, but just his regular cell phone. phone. Yeah, the yeah, cell phone. <laughs> and mm -hmm. 
I got I got really good pictures there. He had to post it on his own site. He had to steal it from mine. Don't know. <laughs> well, that's cool. Yeah, I like the the uh the one of Randy there from Lamb of God. We did a couple tours with those guys. Awesome dudes. Um yeah, those are those are some nice shots. I like those. Uh I do unboxings of cool merch. Uh I mean rock stars. I mean rock stars is cool merch. If you want to hook a brother up. Please give me a sponsor, man. Just give me one of your sponsors or just sponsor me, dude. <laughs> what? Give me merch, man. I'll you want merch? Give you the income, man. I'll give you the income if you just give me the merch. Well, we don't even, we're trying to get the merch still. Oh. Um, yeah, so we don't have it yet. Like we've, we were so caught up with getting the album out digitally. And then obviously everything with, uh, you know, the pandemic or whatever kind of pushed the merch and the CD manufacturing back a little bit. So as soon as we have merch, um, I'll try to get you something. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Well, thank hopefully you. we'll have like two or three different designs to start with. And then as long as people buy it, we'll continue to, uh, to make some stuff. We might have a, uh, a um, one shirt that's a kind of a, I don't want to say a special edition, but one that I think is funny as hell. And uh, I guess when it comes out, people will see it and they'll know what I'm talking about. If I described it, you'd think I was an idiot. So I won't describe it, but just keep a lookout for one shirt that we're going to have that's like a limited edition, funny as hell shirt that I think is funny. Well, thank you for being on my show, man. I hope the next time we talk is at the backstage. I want to hear your show. Thank you. I hope so too. That would be super cool. And I appreciate you inter interviewing me. Um, and uh, let's, yeah, let's do it again soon. Yeah, let's do it again soon in person. I would love to do that. And I would love to say hi to you kids. They seem nice. Well, I, I hope we're nice. <laughs> <laughs> you seem nice as well. So thank you very much. Yeah, have a great day, man. Peace. You too.